We need to talk about Sylvanas. She is clearly in patch 8.2, not working in the best interests of the Horde. She alludes to her endgame, and really from an outside perspective, it seems like somebody is playing 4D chess. So today, we have to dive deep into just what Sylvanas might be up to and what that might mean for the Warcraft universe. Hey everyone and welcome back to another World of Warcraft lore video. Sylvanas is playing 4D chess and you're all pawns. The more we see, the more it just simply seems like that is what's happening, especially when you look into 8.2. So today, that is the case we're going to be laying out, that Sylvanas has a big, grand plan relating to her mastery of death in the Warcraft universe. She won't be the final boss of this expansion, but she won't end this expansion as War Chief. I believe she'll be elevated to a new position in the lore, being far, far more than just a faction leader. This no doubt will be a controversial plotline, I can't say I love it, but it very much seems like it's Blizzard's plan. Oh, and remember that big gun that's pointed at Stormwind right now? The one that Blizzard said would uh, go off? Yeah, I remember. Sylvanas is lacking one massive thing though throughout all of this, a Skillshare subscription. You see, if she had access to the world's largest online learning community with over 25,000 courses and all for only $10 a month, she could learn the skills that she clearly needs because she really does have a branding problem. I mean, hey, I'll even let her use my link down in the description for two months of premium for free. Now, while Sylvanas should check out Storytelling for Leaders by Keith Yamashita, which is great, I'm going to recommend that you check out Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass. Recently, a friend of mine was in a bit of a scatterbrained spot getting things done, and Thomas's course is where I sent her. It is a one-stop shop to cut through all of that, taking the wisdom he's developed over his many successful years on YouTube and boiling it down into a fantastic course. So you can get two free months with my link down below. And with that, thank you to them for supporting my team, and let's get into the video. Okay, let's begin with patch 8.2, because it's literally Sylvanas' fault. Shara pretty much has nothing to do with it, in a way. How do we know this? Well, uh, yeah, listen up. The next phase of our campaign is at hand. Sail out with what remains of our fleet. The blade will guide you to the rendezvous. Casualties on both sides will be substantial. Consider this an opportunity to weed out the disloyal. Okay, so that's a bit wild. Remember that by this stage, the Horde player has taken Zalatath, well, the Black Blade of the Empire without Zalatath in it, uh, back to Sylvanas. Why? Well, some quest text just says that your character is compelled to do so. Odd writing in an MMORPG, but uh, okay. Sylvanas has the blade. She gives it to Nathanos, and she says that line. Sylvanas sends out the remainder of her fleet, saying that the blade will guide it. Where to? Well, she says that the casualties on both sides will be substantial, so she clearly knows that it's a trap. So she knows what's going to happen, and she's right. Whatever she thinks happen, uh, is going to happen does actually happen. The Horde fleet sails straight towards the Maelstrom, towards Najatar. The Alliance see this, the Alliance pursue the Horde fleet, seeing it as really an opportunity to just knock them out of the war. A solid enough plan for the Alliance, although the Alliance leadership is of course aware that Sylvanas has the Black Blade, so one has to wonder why they really don't seem to have been that suspicious. But anyhow, it all goes down as Sylvanas predicted. Nathanos guides the fleet based on the Blade's instruction, the Alliance follows the Horde fleet, and right as they get atop Najatar, Ashara uses the Tidestone of Golgoneth to draw back the sea around the city, sending both fleets crashing into the surrounding cliffs, causing massive, massive casualties on both sides. In one move, Sylvanas sacrifices pretty much what's left of her small fleet for what one presumes is a far larger chunk of the Alliance fleet, destroying it as well. What does this show? Well, Sylvanas really has absolutely no loyalty to the Horde itself. At this stage, she doesn't exactly know who her internal enemies are, but she pretty much knows they're numerous after everything that's happened. She was willing to sacrifice many of her own people, likely based off three things. 
First, her grand plan, which we will cover. Second, the information and the instruction from the Black Blade. And third, the Horde players who have been feeding her information, likely making her suspicious enough of the core of the Horde to think it's time to do something a bit drastic. Now, through the Nazatar questing, players on both sides end up working to save Bane. Now, yes, even the Sylvanas loyalist Horde players, they embark on that exact same questline to save him as well. But that's narratively, uh, narratively lampshade as those loyalists kind of being Sylvanas's, you know, guy in the inside, snooping on all the rebels, playing along with them, but feeding information to her and Nathanos. And then over on Najatar, Jaina and Lorthamar's forces properly team up with each other, but that happens after Nathanos leaves, with Nathanos telling players that he has been recalled to Orgrimmar and that they are to watch for traitors. So, at this stage, the Horde forces in Najatar are all wholly expandable to Sylvanas. They simply are not loyal to her because of the Horde snitch player. She knows this. The Alliance are, of course, her enemy as well. Her pet dog, Nathanos, is back with her in Orgrimmar. And at one point, when the player is in earshot, Sylvanas says this. The threads we have woven with such care will soon be drawn together. The war is serving its purpose. Stay focused on the endgame. You know what is to come. So that begs the question, what is endgame? What are the threads? What the hell is Sylvanas doing? Well, I think it all starts off with the dead. Yeah, the dead. Seemingly Blizzard, inspired by their own Lich King and Game of Thrones' Night King, are probably wanting Sylvanas to be some sort of master of the dead. This has been building up for quite a while, it's clearly been in the works, and it's even included some modern, what I'll call, light retcons. You know, the sort of retcon that is more about recontextualizing old events, rather than changing them. Blizzard have confirmed that Sylvanas pretty much knew about the Wrathgate, that she let it happen, that she used the following battle for Undercity to sort of rid it of her enemies. We then saw Sylvanas make a pact with Helia during the Legion expansion. We originally thought there was a bit of a dropped storyline there, but seemingly not. That's actually something that seems to be left as a purposeful mystery. At first, it's important though to understand who Helia is because that really makes Sylvanas's pact with her significant. Helia was a Titan Watcher who, along with the Keeper Ra, created the four elemental planes and banished the elemental lords to them. Years later, she created the Halls of Valor by raising up a section of Uldor. Odin decided then that he wanted to save the spirits of strong Vrykul, so to do that, he needed the Valkyr to retrieve the souls of those Vrykul. Nobody volunteered, and after an altercation, he forced Helia into being a Valkyr, with her eventually betraying Odin once uh, she was freed from his will by Loken. Now, because of this, she is deeply connected to the Shadowlands, likely because her transformation had something to do with the bargain that Odin made with the Shadowlands spirit. Of course, Odin needed to see into the Shadowlands to work out what powerful spirits he wanted to save. To gain that power, he traded in his eye with a powerful spirit from the Shadowlands, one that I in this video speculate is Muzala, who could be a very important figure. Now, it's possible that there is a tie between Muzala and Helia through this, and we do know that Bomsamdi says he has a boss, meaning that there's a hell of a lot more, in my view, to the Shadowlands that we currently know about. But anyway, Sylvanas famously made her pact with Helia. It's purposefully a mystery to us in its totality, but we do know that she got the Lantern. She planned to use that to get more Valkyr into subdue Air. All deals, of course, have two sides, though, and we don't know what Sylvanas owes Helia because of that deal. Still, it seems like the two have an agreement of some sort. And really, right now, it seems like it's Sylvanas and Helia versus, like, the Lich King and Bomb Samdi, as both of those characters say that they don't like Sylvanas, but it's hard to know exactly to what depths that goes to and how it is placed into context with the relationship between all of the different death entities. That is something that I believe a future expansion will go to great lengths to explain. But still, as you go through all of the recent Sylvanas storyline, it's pretty clear that her plan is just to master death. The Void regard her as serving the enemy. Just about everybody is a bit creeped out by her. Sylvana says that her sisters will serve her in death in the comic. She quips about raising her allies as undead all the time. She essentially is an undead supremacist, which, uh, you know, somewhat makes sense through the lens of wanting to fight the Void, as the undead do seem to be far more resistant to Void corruption than most, like, 
regular mortals. Again, I speculate, as I've said in the past, that's because the imperfect attachment between their souls and their bodies, maybe some Shadowland uh, hijinks there, uh, but that seemingly is a part of why it's harder for them to be corrupted. Now, this is something that even the Lich King knew. Uh, it's said in Chronicle that the Lich King wanted to unite Azeroth in on death because he thought that was the only way that it could stand against the myriad existential threats of the planet faced. So you might be wondering, how does this all tie into the end game that Sylvanas has talked about? Well, in patch 8.2, she knocks out the Alliance Navy, and then something major happens with Ashara. Now, it's not outright confirmed yet. Ashara attempts to raise Nazoth, and I think is then betrayed by him, uh, as the fight text references um, us and her being trapped together. Uh, but here's the thing. Sylvanas, through the Black Blade kind of facilitates the entire thing happening by bringing the Alliance there. So did Nazoth want her to do this? Perhaps Nazoth wanted Ashara to break him free mid-fight so that he could then take the whole lot of us out. Whatever's up, either Ashara is somehow working with Sylvanas through the Black Blade, which seems super unlikely, or Sylvanas is being manipulated by Nazoth through the Blade, or she is allowing him to think he is manipulating her. And that's kind of what brings me on to Endgame and all the stuff that could actually happen. Because you see, I'm pretty sure that the next patch after 8.2 is probably an Azoth raid, at least the next major raid is. And uh, I think that Sylvanas will have actually predicted this. So, Endgame, right? Sylvanas' mastery over death. Now, I'm not saying this is what's going to happen, but I think this is her character's plan. Remember how willing she is to fight with the dead, even raising her own fallen forces. Well, by the time 8.2.5 and 8.3 roll around, almost every single Horde leader will have declared themselves for the Rebels. It's pretty much just going to be her, Nathanos, and Gallywix, assuming um, he thinks his chances are better with her. And that's important for reasons that you're going to see pretty soon. This is what Sylvanas thinks when she touches the Azerite Orb in Before the Storm. She was no longer a dark lady or even a queen. She was a goddess of destruction and creation. And she was stunned that she had never understood how deeply the two were intertwined. Armies, cities, entire cultures, she could raise them and fell them. Stormwind would be among the first, yielding its people to swell the numbers of her own. She could deal death on a scale that... And then she takes her hand off the orb and the passage cuts off. Uh, Sylvanas wants Stormwind. She wants to kill and raise on a massive scale. And then another time in that very same book, she again makes her Stormwind plans pretty darn clear. Uh, right after Legion is done, this passage in the book happens. But soon I will call upon the brave fighters of the Horde for another battle. The one you and I have both longed for. Nathanos was silent. She did not take that for disagreement or disapproval. He was often silent. That he did not press her for more details meant that he understood what she wanted. Stormwind. So yes, before Azerite, before Zalatath, Sylvanas wanted Stormwind. She wanted to kill and raise. You can be sure as hell that she still wants that after she's got all of this power. Just that the only difference is that by the time she can actually go for it, she will have lost the support of the rest of the Horde. And now we've got to remember that World of Warcraft is not written in a bubble. And its writing, better or worse, often worse in my view, is pretty much the Marvel Cinematic Universe mixed with Game of Thrones. I mean, hey, there's been key people in the WoW team tweeting very positively about the recent Game of Thrones episode, so hey, I wouldn't be surprised. Here's a quote from Alex, the creative director of uh, WoW. I've heard on the internet, she's going off the rails, but is she? Here's another quote from him. If I were Sylvanas and looking at what Garrosh wrought upon the world, I'd probably think Garrosh was an amateur. Note, wrought across the world, not just the Alliance. Alex also said that Gallywix's cannon would be used. So here's what I think the most extreme version of Sylvanas' endgame is. I think she'll use the cannon the big Gallywix cannon on Stormwind, because that's where it's pointed. I think she'll use that on Stormwind, and she'll attempt to kill as many as she can. Having lost support of pretty much the entire horde, I think she'll use the plague in Orgrimmar. Yeah, I know, a mad queen using some sort of green goo to solve her problems. But let's be real, I mean, if there's anything that's like the modern Thrones writing, it's Warcraft writing. Uh, note how Sylvanas and Nathanos are both in on it and note how she keeps the loyal Horde player very much at arm's length. She can easily cast aside the Horde loyalist player. After all, they technically do play along with her enemies. 
Everything's done with complete deniability from her side. So the center of both factions could be destroyed and all of their citizens raised. Sylvanus maybe then will attempt to struggle against the rest of the living and perhaps the remaining death entities, such as the Lich King and Bumsamdi. I'm not saying that's what will happen, but I think that's her plan. Now for a slightly less silly option. Well, Sylvanus' plan with Najatar is clearly to get rid of her most powerful enemies. In her ideal scenario, Jaina will be dealt with, and Gan will be dealt with, and she'll also get rid of potential horde rebels like Lorthamar. There's then the Derek Proudmoore situation. I mean, if you look at his, uh, right, we're going to go into 4D chess mode here, okay? If you look at how he is shot in that cinematic, the way that it kind of is emphasizing his dagger, I mean, Sylvanas probably anticipated what Bane would do, right? Given how incredibly unsubtle Bane was during the whole thing. So delivering a mind-controlled Derek to Jaina, that's fine. But delivering a mind-controlled Derek to Jaina using Bane? Well, the cover couldn't be any deeper. She would not suspect that. Indeed, Sylvanas then seemingly planned to use the captured Bane as bait. Now that plan, oddly enough, failed, which is part of why I wonder if she's just going to go, you know, fool Cersei and do her whole thing. Uh, you know, imagine a siege of Orgrimmar too, right? The rebels are there, uh, even some of the loyal horde are there, the alliance are there, everyone's there. It would be an excellent time to, uh, you know, hit Stormwind and then just blight the whole thing uh, while, um, you know, everyone's a bit busy. Anyway, as for where Helia could fit into all this stuff, well, that could be beyond the scope of Battle for Azeroth in Sylvanas's plan. You you know, if she starts doing Shadowlands stuff. Now, importantly, Helia also has the Cavaldier, and that would put Sylvanas at a considerable advantage, considering how she wrecked both faction navies at Najatar by leading them there through the Black Blade. Now, the Black Blade is another very mysterious part to this puzzle, and it's intentionally mysterious. Being in Sylvanas's possession, she can hear the whispers. We can't, so we can't do a Zalatath line breakdown with the blade like we used to in the past when it was wielded by the player priest. I think she'll try to use the blade as a weapon, not only to master death, but maybe to try to lock up the essence of Nazoth. I think something like that's pretty much what we'll, uh, what we'll see her do. And really, I think that's the point of Sylvanas in the story, because overall, I think it's clear she's being written to have a big plan. I don't think Blizzard are going to have her killed off in this expansion. I think she's going to fork off with her own faction. I think she's no longer going to be a racial leader. I think she's going to take up something different. I think her days of leading will be behind her, and I think she'll take up a new place in the lore. I think Blizzard want to do this because they see her as being a very large viewership draw. And I think they know they can use Sylvanas to pull off shocking moments, the ones that get the community talking. Let's be real, that's how they're writing the game now. It's not about having a deep, rich, well-built world. It is about shocking moments and big developments that they can throw cinematics at so that people like me will do reaction videos and, you know, everyone will tweet about it and will get engagement. I really do think that's how they're writing it right now. So please let me know what you think Sylvanas is doing. It seems to me like this 4D chess is pretty obvious. She's talking about Endgame. She's talking about a secret plan between her and Nathanos that literally nobody knows bar the Blizzard writers. So it really does seem like they're shaping all of this up to pull off some really, really big, shocking moments and just do something that basically turns Sylvanas from a faction-based character to being, you know, a sort of a third party. I am pretty sure we will end, or we'll enter the next expansion with the Alliance having internal divisions, the Horde pretty much being back to its old school roots, and then Sylvanas being some sort of character who has went on her own path doing her own quest that, uh, you know, has a complicated relationship with the existing player factions, but also the existing forces of death. And I think that'll be a major theme going forward as we try to explore the Shadowlands. As Blizzard, let's be real, try to find more elements of the Warcraft universe that they can turn into in-game story and in-game content. So there you go. That is my speculation on Sylvanas' endgame and pretty much what I think she's going to be at. Let me know what you think down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. And with that, I'll see you next time.